Hello, I am Vishal Sabrunda from I am Trichy, and my topic is non-performing assets. For definition, non-profit assets have changed over the time, and according to Narsimha Committee report in 1991, those assets for which the interest remains due for a period of four quarters should be considered as NPAs. Subsequently, this period was reduced, and from March 1995 onwards, the asset for which the interest remains unpaid for 90 days were considered as NPAs. Economic reasons for NPP, NPAs. Economic downturn seen since uh, 2008 has been the reason for increasing bad loan. And global demand is still low due to which exports across all the sectors have shown a declining trend for long. In case of the sectors like uh, electricity, the poor financial conditions and most of the SCBs is the problem. In areas like steel, collapse in global prices suggests that a lot of loans will get stressed in the months ahead. Economic survey 2015 mentioned over leveraging of by corporate one of the reasons behind rising bad loans. Another factor that can contribute to the low level of expertise in many big public sector banks is the constant rotation of the duties among the officers and the apparent lack of training in lending principles for the loan officers. Also, the poor recovery and the use of the cohesive techniques by the banks in recovering loans. Now, I'd like to talk about the impacts of NPAs. <clears throat> the higher is the amount of the non-performing assets, the weaker will be the bank's revenue stream. Indian banking sector has been facing the NPAs issues due to the mismanagement in the loan distribution carried by the public sector banks. As the NPAs of the all the banks will rise, it will bring a scarcity of funds in the Indian market. Few banks will be willing to tend if they are not sure of recovering their money. The shareholders of the bank will lose the money as the bank themselves will find tough to survive in the market. This will lead to a crisis situation in the market. The price of the loans interest rate shoots up badly. Shooting of the interest rates will directly impact the investors who wish to take loans for setting up infrastructural, industrial projects, etc. Also, it will also impact the retail consumers who will have the shell out of the higher interest rates of loan. Also, those uh, factors hurt the overall demand in the Indian economy. Finally, it will lead to a lower growth and higher inflation because of the higher cost of capital. Now, I'd like to talk about initiative taken by the Curve NPAs. First is the amendment in the bank, bank loan to give RBI more power. Banking regulations may be amended but to give RBI more powers to monitor the bank accounts with big defaulters. Also the amendment in the banking law will enable setting up the committee to oversee companies that have been the biggest defaulters of loan. RBI wants to the stricter rules to join lenders forum and oversight committee to curb NPAs. While the present law allows the government to direct the RBI to carry out the inspection of a lender there is no provision of setting up oversight committees. Also, there are the chances of the laws which will bar the bank and extend loans to defaulting companies and fail to repay the other banks. Second is the stringent MPA recovery rules. Government has uh, over the years enacted and tweaked the stringent rules to recover assets of defaulters. Experts have pointed out that the NPA problem has been tackled before the time a company starts defaulting, the needs a risk assessment by the lenders reflagging the early signs of possible defaulters. Third is the RBI's loan restriction SASMIs. RBI over the past few decades come up with a number of SASMIs such as the corporate debt restructuring, formation of the joint lenders forum, flexible structure of the long term projects loans of to infrastructure, strategic debt restructuring SASME and sustainable structuring of stressed assets to check the maintenance of NPAs. In many cases, the companies has filed to make profits and default even after the loans were restructured. The fourth point is the present NPA scenario. According to the latest information collated by the government, stressed assets, which includes both non-performing assets as well as the restructured loans of the bank, stood at rupees 9.64 lakh crores by December 31st, 2016. In December, RBI's financial stability report said that the gross non-performing advances ratio of all the banks increased by 
2016.1% by September 2016 from 7.8% in March 2016. The amount stressed in the loans uh, was up to 12.3% to the total loan given by the bank by September up from 11.5% in March 2016. PSU banks was the worst hit by their GNPA may increase to 12.5% by March 2017 and then to 12.9% by March 2018 from 11.8% to September 2016. The fifth point I like to discuss is the banks uh, may tend to take over the haircut. In the past few quarters, most of the banks, especially the PSU lenders, have reported a sharp fall in the profit as they set aside the hefty amounts for the losses of the amount of NPAs which encoded their profits. Given the gravity of the problem, the government may ask the banks to go for more haircut or write off the MPAs. The government and the RBI may also come up with a one-time settlement sashme for the top defaulters before initiating the stringent step against them. The financial ministry and RBI has also considering setting up the bad banks to deal up with the problems of non-performing loans as it has suggested by the chief economic advisor Arvind Subramaniam in the economic survey. Reserve Bank Deputy Governor <coughs> Viral Acharya has also floated twin concept of private asset management company and a national asset management company for resolution of stressed assets. With the rule changing and the strict regulation, the banks may ask to restructure about the 50 large NPA amounts by December 2017. Thank you.